the name that blows the mind of kickboxing fans. In this video, we will delve into the incredible journey of the Dutch kickboxing phenomenon, Semi Schilt, born on October 27, 1973, in the Netherlands. I am a fan of this guy because of his amazing journey of dominance in the sport, boasting an impressive record of victories, including 43 wins, secured 29 knockouts, and claimed victory in four Grand Prix tournaments, with minimal losses. What sets Schilt apart is not just his skill, but also his imposing physical stature. Standing at nearly seven feet tall with an 88-inch wingspan, Schilt is truly a towering figure in the kickboxing world. Throughout his career, he has left a trail of awe-inspiring achievements, establishing himself as one of the most formidable fighters in the sport's history. In the year 2005, Semi Schilt reached semi-finals of K1 World Grand Prix 2005 tournament. In a pivotal quarter-final match of a prestigious tournament, Schilt faced off against the formidable Ray Sifo. Towering over his opponent, Schilt utilized his imposing stature to his advantage, repeatedly delivering powerful front kicks to Sefo's midsection, keeping him at a distance. Meanwhile, he skillfully evaded Sefo's wild swings, maintaining control of the fight. With three grueling rounds behind him, Schilt emerged victorious, thanks to his strategic use of distance and precise striking. In the semi-final match, Schilt clashed with fellow Dutchman Remy Bonjaski in a showdown of epic proportions. Bonjaski, known for his resilience, absorbed a barrage of strikes from Schilt, including thunderous kicks to the body and knees to the midsection. However, it was Schilt's calculated precision that proved decisive, as he landed a devastating kick to Bonjaski's liver, swiftly ending the contest. Schilt's flawless execution of his strikes showcased his mastery of the craft and set the stage for an electrifying finale. As he reached the finals, Schilt faced off against his old rival, Glauber Feitosa, in a highly anticipated match. Despite Feitosa's fast punches and tricky footwork, Schilt stayed calm, showing off his impressive skills and strength. With quick reflexes, Schilt launched a relentless series of attacks, ending with a powerful kick to Feitosa's head that knocked him down. The crowd cheered in amazement as Schilt proved himself as a top kickboxer, winning his first major title and starting his journey to K1 success. In 2006, Semi Schilt fought Bjorn Bregi in a match to qualify for the tournament. Bray, nicknamed the Swiss Express, started strong with a big right punch, but Schilt, being so tall, managed to handle it. With skill and determination, Schilt landed some heavy hits knocking Bray down. Despite Bray's attempts to fight back, Schilt's continuous attacks were too overwhelming, and he won the match decisively. Moving on to the quarterfinals, Schilt met Jerome Labana in a clash of European titans. Schilt utilized his superior reach and striking ability to keep Labana at bay, peppering him with a barrage of well-timed kicks and punches. With each strike, Schilt systematically dismantled his opponent's defenses, eventually earning a dominant victory by a comfortable decision from the judges. In the semi-finals, Schilt faced Ernesto Hust, a formidable opponent whom he had defeated previously. Schilt unleashed a relentless barrage of kicks and knees, targeting Hust's head and body with precision. Despite Hust's resilience, Schilt's relentless assault proved too much, securing him a hard-fought victory and a spot in the K1 World Grand Prix final. In the final match, Schilt squared off against Peter Ertz, one of kickboxing's ultimate best. Ertz came out swinging with ferocious intensity, but Schilt remained composed, countering with well-timed strikes and powerful combinations. Despite Ert's best efforts, Schilt's superior technique and strategic prowess allowed him to dictate the pace of the fight. In the end, Schilt emerged victorious, claiming the title of K1 Grand Prix Champion of the World with a comfortable decision from the judges. A few months after securing his second consecutive Grand Prix victory, Semi Schilt returned to the ring for a showdown against Ray Sefo, in the K1 Super Heavyweight title fight of 2007. In an intense battle, Sefo landed the first significant blow, stunning Schilt with a powerful strike. Sefo continued to unleash a barrage of punches and kicks, rattling Schilt multiple times throughout the fight. However, just when it seemed like Sefo was on the brink of victory, Schilt turned the tables with a devastating counter left hook, flooring Sefo and solidifying his position as the K1 Super Heavyweight Champion. In the same year, Semi Schilt entered the K1 World Grand Prix as the defending champion, aiming to secure his third consecutive title. In the opening round, he faced Paul Slowinski, who came out swinging early in the match. 
Despite Slowinski's aggressive start, Schilt remained composed, acknowledging his opponent's strikes before unleashing a devastating combination of his own, culminating in a powerful knee strike that left Slowinski reeling. Schilt's strategic prowess and ability to counter effectively propelled him to victory, setting the stage for the next round of the tournament. In the semi-final, Schilt faced off against Jerome Labana, a familiar foe from the previous year's Grand Prix. Labana initially pressed the action, but Schilt quickly turned the tide with a well-timed knee strike that left Labana struggling to regain his composure. In the second round, Schilt capitalized on his opponent's vulnerability, targeting Labana's leg with a series of low kicks that ultimately led to Labana crashing to the mat. With Labana unable to continue, Schilt advanced to the final round, once again proving his dominance in the ring. In the final match, Schilt squared off against the legendary Peter Ertz in a highly anticipated showdown. Both fighters exchanged powerful low kicks before engaging in close-range combat. Within moments, Schilt delivered a devastating leg kick that compromised Ertz's mobility. Midway through the first round, Ertz's legs gave out, unable to withstand Schilt's relentless assault. As Schilt continued to assert his dominance, Ertz was unable to continue, solidifying Schilt's status as the first ever three-time champion in K1 Grand Prix history. A remarkable achievement for the Dutch powerhouse. The defending champion lost the opening fight of the Grand Prix 2008 against Peter Ertz. Peter Ertz sought revenge against Schilt. Everyone believed Schilt's legacy was finished, but who knows what comes next. The champion regained momentum after a loss and entered the 2009 tournament with a lot to prove. He faced Jerome Labana in the semi-final due to their past encounter. Labana took the offensive once again, as he's known for, but Shield broke his momentum with a powerful kick. Although Labana tried to recover, Schilt landed the final blow, defeating him and advancing to the semi-finals. In the semi-finals, Shield faced Remy Bonjaski, who quickly stunned Schilt with a knockout seconds into the fight. However, as Bonjaski relentlessly pursued Shield, he exhausted himself, allowing Shield to take control. Schilt showcased his strength, knocking Bonjaski down multiple times and ultimately winning the match. In the big fight against Badahari, Shield faced a tough opponent who came out swinging hard, aiming for a quick victory. However, Schilt remained calm and focused, not letting Hari's aggressive moves unsettle him. Despite Hari's energetic approach, he underestimated Schilt's experience and determination. Throughout the fight, Schilt patiently waited for the right moment to strike back, staying steady even when Hari tried to overpower him. When Hari left himself open, Shield seized the opportunity and delivered a powerful punch that knocked Hari down. Unable to continue, Hari was defeated, securing Schilt's fourth K1 Grand Prix title and cementing his status as the greatest champion in K1 history. This victory showcased Shield's tactical prowess and ability to capitalize on his opponent's mistakes, solidifying his legendary status in kickboxing. In the later stages of his career in K1, Schilt concluded his triumphant chapter and sought further glory in kickboxing. In his first fight, he defeated Errol Zimmerman to claim the glory heavyweight title. Schilt then entered the Grand Slam tournament, where he defeated Rico Verhoeven in the quarterfinals and Gokan Saki in the semifinals. In the final bout of his career, he faced Daniel Gita, delivering a perfect performance. Despite G's strong response, Schilt countered with his own powerful strikes. As the fight progressed, Schilt unleashed a devastating head kick that knocked Gita down, sealing his victory. With yet another tournament win, Schilt solidified his status as one of the greatest heavyweight kickboxers, if not the greatest of all time. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell for notifications. Stay tuned for more exciting content in our next video. Boxing World signing out.